Good evening, folks. Ken Hovind here and the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama. Today, March 21st, the uh, uh, equinox. Everybody gets 12 hours daylight, 12 hours darkness. Who cares? And Anna had a birthday today. Oh. So, yay! <laughs> and <clears throat> and happy birthday, Anna. We took her to McDonald's and bought one of every kind of coffee they have. And she tried them all. And which kind did you like the best? I think I like the caramel frappe the best. Caramel, caramel frappe, frappe, whatever that is, okay? And at lunch today, you were still in high gear wanting to get more done, right? <laughs> Cindy said, Anna, it's just, we got to get something done around here or something, you know. <laughs> 21, and first time for coffee. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. Uh, we got to sing happy birthday. Uh, uh, Dinosaur Adventure Land birthday song. You ready? One, two, three, four. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Happy birthday, Anna. All right. <laughs> what a blessing. You've been here, what, two years now? Over two years. Praise God. Amen. We need the fence done for the emus tomorrow. Uh, Rich, going to get a crew out there. How many people you want? In the morning, first thing, we got to get the emus fenced in the other part so they leave the chickens alone. Okay. We need an electrician to come down. Philip did a wonderful job getting the camper hookups started. Not done yet, though. So he had to leave today with his family back for New England someplace. Thank you, brother, for all you did. But we need an electrician down here for a couple days to do all that stuff. It's revolting, I know. A plumber. we got, we got to get a plumber to finish the water lines out to the peninsula and over to Jeff's cabin and for all the new camper hookups. So a plumber, come on down here. Spend two days. We need that. Uh, let's see. Here is one of the emus. They are super friendly, all three of them, and they are really cool, going to be a cool attraction. Bring your group down for Dinosaur Adventureland to camp out here if you'd like. Teachers, bring your students for a field trip. April 20th is our one-year anniversary of being open. We talked about it last April and said, you know, we're not done. Somebody said, Brother Hovind, you will never be done. <laughs> I said, well, you're right, let's just open, okay? So, <laughs> <we> just, <laughs> yeah, we'll never be done. Uh, we've got a geode collection being donated from or, uh, Utah, uh, and it needs to be it needs a ride down here, 20 or 30, 40 pounds, I'm not sure. But if, you wanna, if you're coming this way from Utah, want to come down and bring some geodes, that would be a blessing to the ministry to put in our rock collection. Boot camp coming up June 14, 15. You have a new uh, website. Uh, is that going up tomorrow, right? Monday. Monday, it's new it's website. It's up now, but we don't want people doing it. Okay, yet. no, don't go yet. Okay, to the uh, speakers coming, Dennis Swift, Paul Abramson, Don Boyce for sure. The cooling tubes are in and working good. Did you feel them, Cindy? Did you it's feel? It's hot in the greenhouse, honey. It's hot in the greenhouse yeah. now. We got a little fan to suck the cooling earth air, uh, air in. It's going to be fine. It's going to be like. Fan to make it in? We don't. We're not done yet. Okay. It's, we're working on it. Okay. The hurrier I go, the behinder I get. Uh, let's see, brother. You want to tell them about the tools? Come on up here. That was what a blessing that was. You called from Washington State. What a couple months ago? Said you want to help, uh, what do you need? I said, we need all kinds of tools around here. And so what, tell them what you did on that tool situation. And you don't have your SpongeBob hat on. <laughs> People won't recognize you without SpongeBob. That's my You're son. the same one. That's your son's? Okay. There you so, go, brother. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we answered a call, Dinosaur Adventure Land. Uh, Kent Hoven put out a call to uh, fix some tools. And we got with uh, Rich, the shop program, the shop manager, and uh, he sent me some pictures of the tools, and we decided that a lot of them need replacing. So we went into second gear with a tool drive. Uh, the the residents and, and business owners of Washington State uh, came out with generosity and caring hands. I'd like to give a couple of plugs to them. Uh, I'd like to special thanks to Sean. He's the owner of Double Eagle Pawn Shops. Uh, what a magnificent man. He, he he put us out of that store with boxes of tools. That's in Spokane, Washington. Yeah, Spokane, Washington. Two locations, Deer Park, hey. Deer Park, Spokane, and Spokane North. And then another special thanks to Kurt, the owner of Drybox USA Containers, uh, modifies sales, rentals. Uh, they serve Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. And uh, they were very generous as well. Um, also, a second, a third handout to Home Depot. Yay. Home Depot gave coupons, which uh, um, resulted in a lot of consumable parts for the tools that we got. And uh, then the UPS store of Spokane, uh, special guests for uh, um, uh, thank you for Kevin. 
who was also touched, had a story of his family meeting you in Massachusetts at a at a seminar in which it changed their life and they gave their life to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. So Praise God. Uh, he paid. They paid back by meeting halfway of shipping all the tools. Uh, Amen. This is just Washington State. Um, there's 49 other states. Every state has a person just like me and my son. Uh, if you're willing to step out and and just uh, um, Dinosaur Adventureland has a constant need list that's available. Just call Anna or Rhonda at the office and um, just say, hey, you know, my style is to donate a one time. Actually, go ahead and online make a donation either through Amazon or or through eBay. Some of the things we're needing right now is some 60 uh, volt DeWalt. We'd like a portable um, uh, table saw as well as a portable, uh, uh, like a 12 inch or a 10 inch compound miter. And, uh, and then anything else, just call. They have a need all the time. Uh, if you, if you want to know how you can help out and be a part of where God is, that's the way. So God Amen. bless. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, many, many, many years ago when I started this ministry, I felt God calling me to start Creation Science Evangelism back in 1989. I prayed and cried, and I said, Lord, I don't, I don't want this to be an ordinary ministry. I don't want to just speak on creation. So I'm not going to charge anything when I go speak. And I'm not going to copyright my videos. I'm going to let people copy them. We finally had to change that and said, well, you can copy them, but you can't sell them, okay? So they're copyrighted only to prevent people from marketing them. So you have to buy them from us. But we've put out, we think about 14 million videos now in 40 languages. No telling how many saved. We, many, hundreds of thousands have given the heart to the Lord. The goal is to win the war, not build a castle for heaven's sake. So that's what we're trying to do. And so Dinosaur Adventureland, we started and said, well, let's just do this with volunteer labor. People come work for a week or two. Uh, if they want to stay forever, they start their own company, and we sub out to them to, uh, to get something done. So uh, how many have been here for over a year? One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. That's just the ones in the room. Yeah. So it's a blast. Come on down. Once you get here, you get hooked. It's beautiful here. Let's see. We need um, rope and cargo nets for Dinosaur Adventure Land. If you got some of those for the playground, a netosaurus and a ropeosaurus. We need more license plates. Here is the license plate osaurus on the hill. Yeah. I worked yeah. on that. Yeah, and there is Sean. We've got the outline done. About how many do you have left? How many more plates you got to go, Sean? Uh, I need to fill that in, so whatever anybody wants to I know, but you have maybe 30 or 40 is all you have left, right? I or? only have uh, eight left. Eight left. Yeah. So we need a bunch of old license plates, any kind. Yep, yeah. and some glow-in-the-dark paint. Glow in the dark. We got the glow in the dark rocks we're going to yeah, put on there. That's crazy. No, we got to have it. Anyway, Sean uh, is fixing up the pavilion and we need a bunch of palm leaves, just dead palm leaves. Uh, bring, if you're coming up from South Florida, bring a bunch. Actually, Sean needs a wife to live in the camper with him down there by the. <laughs> well, so, with that, you got the hedgehog. <laughs> Never mind, you're fine. Okay. Super cute. So, we're doing the uh, 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 cargo nets and all kinds of playground <laughs> stuff. I want to have an awesome playground. When I was in California, uh, our, we had a hundred and some students there at the school, and they had, uh, they'd ride their bikes to school, and just, they're all over the sidewalk. So we're meeting at staff meeting one morning for the teachers, and I said, we need a bike rack. Let's pray for a bike rack. I said, Lord, we need a bike rack here. I called, and they're about 200 bucks, you know, for a bike rack. So I said, I don't want to do that. I can't afford it, you know. So I was driving, I just brand new to California, and I'm driving down the street, and right next to the school, I mean, across the six-foot fence, right, neighbors, was the yard where they took care of uh, all the parks and recreation department, maintenance department, for the whole city of Fairfield, California. I happened to look over the fence, and there was this giant pile, probably twice as big as this room, and I saw a bike rack in that pile of all kinds of stuff. Oh, that's awesome. So I went over there, and I talked to the guy. I said, look, I'm next door at the school, and we need a bike rack. Would you sell us that bike rack out of that pile? He said, oh, that's a sad story. I said, well, tell me the story. He said, well, we've put a new highway all the way across Fairfield, California, and we had to take out three of our parks. And, and if any kid ever gets hurt on a piece of equipment, we put it in there. We take it out of the park. And it's, it's a giant pile of used playground equipment and, and stuff from the parks we had to take out. I said, can you sell any of it? He said, no, because then we'll be liable. I said, could you sell it for scrap metal? His eyes lit up. 
He said, I would love to get that out of my yard. Let me do some checking. He called me back. He said, okay, here's the deal. Yes, we're, sell we're not selling you playground equipment. We're selling scrap metal. Okay. And you got to take it all, all of it. Please. I said, how much? He said, 150 bucks. <laughs> there were five bike racks in that pile. There was a giant fiberglass circular slide. I mean, the giant ones, you know, circular slide. There were five or six industrial, you know, swing sets. We put up everything we wanted. We had the best playground in the world for that school. When we got done, I called other schools and said, look, we have fixed all this equipment up. Uh, if you'd like to buy it for your school, uh, come see what we've got. We sold the parts we did not want for $4,000 <laughs> from our 150. God. We had the huge circular slide, fiberglass slide with the little metal plates that overlap all the way down. And a guy in our church, there was a body man. Uh, he said, I'll paint it for you. He said, I do fiberglass work and I'll fix it, fix it up and paint it. So he took the fiberglass or the uh, round uh, sandpaper discs that you put on a you know, round sander and he stuck them all up the slide so we could have something to stand on while he worked on it. So we put a sign across the front of the ladder, do not use, you know, wet paint. Well, a five-year-old girl in our school went under the sign and went up and slid down on the sandpaper. She couldn't read. She's five years old. Couldn't read the sign. Now she can't sit down. She, can <laughs> she came to school about four days later, walking real funny. I said, Janelle, what happened? She said, there were stickers on the slide. <laughs> it was, poor kid. Oh, well. Anyway, so we're looking for some cargo nets. I know how to build a playground that the kids go nuts over. Okay, so Dinosaur Adventure Land, they're going to be talking about this in China, saying you've got to go see hey, Dinosaur Adventure Land Playground. Yeah, so help us out if you would. The backhoe and the uh, excavator, we are uh, looking at selling. If you'd like to come down, help us. Uh, or you know somebody wants that. Road grader, we are done. A Caterpillar 12E. We got the, uh, the parts came in for this today. Did you hear about that? One of the hydraulics was leaking a little bit, so they're going to rebuild it, I think it's in. If you want to help join our 777 Club, help us stay open for free. Just donate a dollar a day is what we're asking. Some give more, some give way less, some give nothing. Most give nothing, actually. But uh, drdino.com, if you want to help us, that's how we can stay open for free. Dollar a day, 31 bucks. Make any checks to CSE. Okay, now, I have something here. Let me close that. And close, there we go. Page, slide number 485. There. I get the strangest things sent to me. Let me see what you think of this. I haven't rehearsed this even once, so this will be the first time. Acts chapter 19. We're going to be doing, we're continuing our seminar on creation versus evolution. We're not sure what part it's going to be or what even the title is going to be. We're just going to do it all and then edit it out and add a fancy title to the front. So this is our creation seminar that I've done probably 20, we've videotaped about 20 times. The last time was 15 years ago. We're starting from scratch, going to redo it, add all the material and add a whole bunch of stuff to it. Anyway, <clears throat> Acts 19. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I've been there, I must also see Rome. I must, oh, yeah, okay. So he went into Macedonia, which today we would call Greece. Two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. At the same time, there arose no small stir about that way. In other words, people got upset about the Christians. Kind of standard. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So these guys made their living off of making little idols to sell to worship the goddess Diana. All right? whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. In other words, this is how we make our money, selling these little idols. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people, saying that there be, they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these things, they were full of wrath, and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples, disciples suffered him not, did not allow him. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, 
sent unto him, desiring that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice, about the space of two hours, cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Imagine hollering that for two hours straight. Two hours. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? So they were worshiping a meteorite, probably. You know, all the Muslims, once a lifetime, are required to go to Mecca to march around that big, huge black box. You know what's in that box? A rock. I'm serious. Iron rock? A big rock. Grandpa. Grandpa. <laughs> Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies. Let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. Two more and we'll go to the real point here. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. Acts 19. Here's what I got. After his unjust prison term ended, Kent purposed in his spirit that he had, when he had produced his video series, to also create a YouTube channel showing the stupidity of evolution. So he went into Lenox, Alabama, along with a few people that God called to help him. At the same time, there arose no small stir about Hovind's creation teaching for a whole bunch of evolutionists, which made their living producing articles and artwork to show evidence for evolution, and brought in lots of grant money to the university, called together, <laughs> called together evolutionists of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this theory we have our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Lenox, but almost throughout the whole world via the internet, this Hoven hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying there be no evidence for macroevolution which can be observed. <laughs> so that not only this our jobs are in danger to be said at naught, but also that the temple of the great universities and all our icons like dinosaurs and geologic column that teach our religion should be despised, and their magnificence should be destroyed whom all the world believeth. And when the low IQ folks who believe in evolution and love the freedom it gave them from God's rules heard these things, they were full of wrath and cried out saying, we know the earth is billions of years old and evolution is true. <laughs> and the whole internet was filled with confusion. And having caused many creationists to be fired, they rushed with one accord into the comment section and the news media. <laughs> and when Kent would have entered into the university classroom, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent to him, desiring he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him in forward, and he would have made his defense. But when they knew he was a creationist, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Evolution is a fact! Evolution is a fact! <laughs> And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye evolutionists, what man is there that knoweth not how that evolutionism is true? And the fossils which we find in the ground are proof. They all worship that, okay? <laughs> Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet, do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches nor blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Charles Darwin and the evolutionists which worship with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and the deputies let them implead one another. But if you inquire about other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. Okay, so uh, there being no cause whereby we may give an account to those who dole out the grant money of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. <laughs> Yay, people. <laughs> thank you, thank you, whoever. <laughs> okay. Um, in, in many, re yes, ma'am. We did that. Yeah, yeah. We sang happy birthday. Yeah. Aww. Where were you, Julie? I, I guess I was... She was well, actually was, sitting there, but her mind was, was somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> in, many, in many religions of the world, the priest will wear special clothing. So the people think he is holier than them and has a special connection with God. 
so they have special holding. Many religions that he wears a special hat, so they think he is holier than them and has a special connection. They have special hand signs that they give, right? Many religions they use a special hand sign, special hat, special clothing. Two fingers up because they are so holy. Oh, dominoes, dominoes, checkers and chess. My father plays dominoes better than your father. Okay. The special hand signs, okay. Many religions of the world, the priest has a special ring, so the people think he's holier than them. Many religions, they wear special jewelry, so the people think, oh, he's got a special connection. The devout Catholic wears special jewelry and repeats the rosary. Hail Mary, full of grapes, swinging beads all over the place. Swing them high, swing them low. Come on, Mary, go, go, go. Okay. <laughs> they have magical sounding words and artwork and it's hand signs. It's all a bunch of hocus pocus to get people to believe what they believe. They tell the people in the Catholic Church that priest actually turns that bread into the body of Christ. And that grape juice or wine actually becomes the blood. The Catholic Pope uses mystical sounding words. <laughs> Don't they have all kinds of big fancy words to try to hide what they're really saying? Oh, yes. The Roman Orthodox Church does that, mystical sounding words. The Greek Orthodox does that same thing, fancy clothing, fancy hat, fancy rings. The Greek Orthodox, all these mystical words, we are holy. Greek Orthodox, all the same thing, they do this all the time. Russian Orthodox does the same thing. Yes sir, you look at the fancy hat, the fancy clothing. Uh, they use mystical words and practices so people think they have special powers. The Finnish Lutheran priest does the same thing from Finland. The Muslims do that same thing, a fancy hat, fancy sounding words, fancy sometimes secret handshakes. So people think, oh wow, he's holy. The priests of evolution are always using <laughs> high sounding words. So people think they have special knowledge that the average person doesn't understand. Just listen to the, some of these guys talk. And they use all the $12 words instead of explaining where people can understand. Now, what I'm trying to do in my seminar as we retape this whole thing, I want to make it simple where the fourth graders say, I understood that guy. In the previous session, we talked about the first law of thermodynamics. Thermo means heat, like a thermometer. Dynamics, where we get our word dynamite, power. The power of heat. The first law says matter cannot be created or destroyed. So as a refresher from what we covered last time, that means somebody had to make the world, or the world made itself. There's no other choice. There's a few people from Berkeley who think we're not really here, we just think we're here. <laughs> okay, go back to smoking your pot, we're here, okay? Yeah, Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, they don't like that. So they say, humanists, religious humanists regard the universe as self-existing and not created. Well hold it, if the world was not created, how did it get here? Well, they've come up with a dumb Big Bang Theory. That's the best answer they've got. The current universe came into existence about 14 billion years ago. The Big Bang. Oh, really? No, it's better than that. It's 13.772 billion years old and three weeks. Uh, estimate the age of the universe with an uncertainty of 59 million years. The Planck constant. All this is based on starlight, which we covered last time. They're saying because the distance to the stars is X number, therefore the universe is that old. That's the whole proof of the universe being billions, 13.8 billions of years old. Scientists are undecided whether this means the universe began from a singularity or that current knowledge is insufficient to describe the universe at that time. They put it at 13.8 billion years ago. We'll discuss that about the age of the earth maybe in the next session. The second law of thermodynamics. First one says matter can't be created or destroyed. Without a god. There had to be a god. There had to be a creator. There's, or matter made itself. I mean, hello, the world's stuff's made out of matter. Where did it come from? Had to have a creator or make itself. Second law of thermodynamics. Entropy. Things are falling apart. Is a measure of the disorder in a system. All systems gain entropy, entropy over time. In other words, Everything's falling apart. Second law of thermodynamics says the total entropy of both a system and its surrounding will never decrease. It'll always be falling apart. You can never go backwards on this. The first law says energy is always conserved. It cannot be created or destroyed. The second law, entropy or randomness, disorder of the universe is always increasing. Third law states that entropy of a pure crystal at zero degrees Kelvin is zero. There's three different ways to measure heat. Fahrenheit, which we use in this country, 
and then most other countries use the Celsius scale, and then Kelvin is really the same as Celsius, only shifted down 173 degrees. Same distance between the degrees. Okay? They started at absolute zero instead of the freezing point of water. That's the only difference between Kelvin and centigrade. Okay. The second law of thermodynamics is one of the three laws. The term thermo comes from two words, thermo meaning heat and dynam dynamic meaning power. Thus the laws of thermodynamics are the laws of heat power. As far as we can tell, these laws are absolute. All things in the universe, observable universe are affected by and obey the laws of thermodynamics. Okay, fair enough. The second law says everything's falling apart. You leave something alone for a while, it'll rot, rust, die, fall apart, break down, nothing gets better. The Bible teaches that. The heavens are the works of the hands, they shall perish. The, but thou remainest, they shall wax old as doth a garment. Everything falls apart. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens that are the works of the hands, they shall perish. Nothing gets better by itself. Look at your hairdo when you wake up in the morning. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Everything tends toward chaos. Here is Sue at 20. Here she is at 90. And here she is at 3,000. <laughs> right? Another way of stating the second law is the universe is constantly getting more disorderly. We have to work hard to straighten out a room, but left to itself it becomes a mess again. In fact, all we have to do is nothing, and everything deteriorates, collapses, breaks down, wears out all by itself. That's what the second law is all about. Hmm. Isaac Asimov. The second law is that entropy always increases. Holds, I think, the supreme position among the laws of nature. If your theory is found to be against the second law, I can give you no hope. There is nothing for it but to collapse in deepest humiliation. Uh, Arthur Eddington, who was a very famous uh, scientist, I agree, everything's falling apart. Your buildings are constantly losing heat, okay? But, but the textbooks teach the kids, and I've got a room full of textbooks here, they're telling them evolution doesn't have to follow that. Humans probably evolved from bacteria more than four billion years ago. Hold on a minute. How did you get from a single-celled bacteria to a human being with a hundred trillion cells? Entropy increases. Nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. That is ludicrous. That's re what a dumb statement to make in a college textbook. Evolutionists assume they can overcome the law by adding energy. This is their secret ingredient. Things become more disorganized due to random events, not more organized. Dar disorder increases in a closed system, which the Earth most certainly is not. Oh. Energy continually enters the biosphere from the sun. So they're telling the kids adding energy will overcome the second law of thermodynamics. Slow down. Don't bite into that, kids. Okay, there's poison in that sentence. First place, the universe is a closed system. What they said was the earth is an open system, which is true. The earth receives energy from the sun. Do you think the sun's energy is going to overcome the second law? Let's talk about that. Second thing, adding energy is destructive. Something has to utilize the energy. Fill the trunk of your car with gasoline and throw in a match. You will have added a whole bunch of energy and your car will land probably in you know North Carolina. <laughs> right? <laughs> in, in pieces. See, there has to be a complex mechanism to utilize that energy, like a fuel system, an injection system, and a, a drivetrain, and uh, engines, you know, pistons, and oh, it's a very complicated system. How many things have to be right on a car to make it work? Thousands of things. How many things can go wrong to make it stop working? Any one of thousands of things, right? Right. We had, the Japanese added a whole bunch of energy to Pearl Harbor one day. They didn't organize a thing for us. So a couple years later, we returned the favor and added energy to some of their cities, didn't we? With the first atomic bombs. Yeah, didn't organize nothing over there. We added a bunch of energy to Afghanistan trying to find the guy with the diaper on his head. And we didn't organize nothing over there either. The sun's energy is going to destroy the roof of your house. The sun's energy will destroy your entire house. Just the sun's energy will destroy the roof on your car. It'll destroy your upholstery. It'll destroy your paint job. The sun, there's only one thing that can actually use the sun's energy. Chlorophyll, found in plant cells. And one chlorophyll molecule is probably more complicated than a space shuttle. Yeah, they figured out, they used to call it the black box, they couldn't figure it out, they get so far. How does it work? Yeah, it's still a mystery, a lot of stuff about the chlorophyll. But one leaf cell is more complex than a whole city. 
No, the second law stands as solid, and evolution thinks they can violate it, and they are wrong. Evolution is the dumbest religion in the history of the world. But in spite of all the clear laws that evolution cannot overcome, they still teach it. They say things get better, like this textbook. Boys and girls, right here. 3.4 billion years old, the remains of the early ancestors of modern human beings. A starfish is the early ancestors of modern human beings? How about Discover Magazine? Was your ancestor a sea sponge? This is your ancestor. Well, who'd have thunk it? Is SpongeBob our oldest ancestor? <laughs> it's difficult to imagine that man could have evolved from an organless, multicellular sponge. Then again, that's what hundreds of millions of years of natural selection will do to a species. According to a new study published in the journal Nature Geoscience, woo, we can thank our square pants friend from Bikini Bottom for paving the way for more complex life on Earth. <laughs> Grandpa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how about your oldest ancestor was probably sponge like? Access today. Put on the ceremonial hat. This is Smithsonian. You would think somebody with a brain would have a job there. Oh, Anna's got the ceremonial hat on. There you go. All right. Okay. Who's your daddy? Yeah, okay. Um, how about this one? Science book right on the shelf over there. 30 million years ago, larger primates like the monkeys and apes evolved. They just make these statements like, don't question it. This is what happened. This is just like fairy tales. Long ago and far away. Stop right there. How about let's be a little more specific, okay? Anyway. These critters evolved. Oh, that means really long ago and far away. It means a fairy tale is coming next, is what it means, okay? Uh, it says they're ancestral to both humans and modern apes. Ancestors to humans? Grandpa? What big eyes you have, Grandpa. The better to see you with, my boy. <laughs> BBC Science. Tarsiers, distant cousins of humans. You know, your, ki <laughs> your kids go ape in school, here's why. We're teaching the kids they're nothing but an animal, and then we're wondering, why do they act like animals? Duh. Barbara Reynolds figured it out. She said he's being taught evolution. Guess what, Johnny? You're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. I'm just an animal? Okay. Now, we teach the students they're nothing but animals. Do you think maybe that might be having an effect on them? Uh, yeah. Bible says, he that sinneth against me wrongeth his soul, all they that hate me love death. Have you noticed a lot of the rock and roll culture is full of the music of death and suffering and killing people and all this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. It's, it's evil. They love it though. They do. It's a death culture. That's what evolution is all about. If one animal evolves better than the rest, what has to happen to the rest of them to make this work? They got to die. They gotta die. Mm. Yeah, this is Adolf Hitler 101. Let's find the most superior race, kill off the rest. Yeah. Now, people say, the textbooks, they'll tell the kids there are no absolutes. Well, yeah, there is. Thus saith the Lord. That's absolute. Found 400 times in the Bible. The Bible says, Thou shalt not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Some people don't know or don't care what God's Word said. How would you like to be married to that? Oh, my gosh. What is that? I don't know. Pin, <laughs> pin cushion for sure. What is that? No, you're not that your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost? D don't do that, okay? It belongs to God. Many teachers blindly follow the textbook, never realizing you can teach creation if you wish. This is one of the biggest snow jobs in history. Here's what happened. Te this articles are great from ICR, Institute for Creation Research. They're now in Dallas, Texas. That's their old phone number. I don't know what it is in Dallas now. Just icr.org. Uh, two states, Arkansas and Louisiana, both passed laws in the early 80s, I believe saying teachers are required to teach creation. Notice the word requiring. That was what they jumped on. The Arkansas and Louisiana said teachers are required to teach creation in your classroom. That case, it was taken to court. They said, no. The court said you cannot require that creation be taught. They did not say you could not teach creation. No court has ever said that. They said you can't require it. And even Stephen Gould, who believed, in create, who believed in evolution until he died, 
He said, it's, he said, no statute exists in any state to bar instruction in creation science. It can be taught before, it can be taught now. Wow. Teachers have always been allowed to teach creation in the schools. It just can't be mandatory. That's all. That's all they said. The ACLU, the American Communist Lawyers Union, wants you to believe that you cannot teach creation. And they may threaten a lawsuit if you do. Yep. When they took prayer out of school, they kind of muddied the water. Well, that's what's coming next. Yep, took the prayer out of school. What happened is, teachers are teaching the kids, you started like an animal and you slowly evolved to a human. This is in all the books, it's in all the schools. Now, don't you think that might destroy some kids' faith in the Bible? Yeah. Jesus said, whoso shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone be hanged about his neck, and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing we shall receive the greater condemnation. Teachers that teach evolution are going to be in serious trouble when they stand before God. Now, many godly teachers are in the school system. My brother helped lead me to the Lord. He's taught 34 years public school and retired. My mom, who brought me into the world, was a, reti is a retired public school teacher. Died years ago in 2000. But you can teach creation, and many do. Many will say, okay, kids, here's what the book says. Now, I don't believe this for a second, but I'm required to teach this to you because these are state standards. I want you to learn this for the test. And the kid on the test, if they say, how old is the earth? The kid on the test could say, the textbook says 3.772 billion years old. However, this is stupid. They learned the stuff. They answered the question. They didn't swallow it. Right. You can do that. And you should, kids, stand up. Even if you're the only one, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody else is bowing down. Everybody's looking around. What are you guys doing standing? We ain't bowing to that image. That thing is dumb. Okay, hang on. So here's what happened. 1950s, the average textbook had only two to 3,000 words about the evolution theory in the whole book. 1963, something happened. It spiked up to 33,000 words. What happened to cause this? Well, it was pretty slick. The Russians beat us in the space race in 1957. They launched the first satellite, Sputnik, which basically was shot it up as a rock circling around. Uh, ours was a thousand times more technical. But anyway, that's another story. Life magazine. Everybody all over the world back then, in America especially, they were saying, oh, you got to build a fallout shelter, build a bomb shelter, because we could, we're losing the space race. The Soviets are going to come attack us. Anybody old enough to remember the panic in America when that was going on? You remember that, brother? They said, oh, everybody, my dad and we had plans for a bomb shelter in the backyard in East Peoria, Illinois. Also in 1959 was the 100-year anniversary of Charles Darwin's book coming out, coming out. Three of them on the shelf over there. 1959, President Eisenhower asked Congress for a billion dollars for the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare to fund promotion and publication of new science textbooks containing more evolution to catch up with Darwin's theory. The National Science Foundation made a nine-part theme, new series of books, Major theme was evolution, BSCS series. I got them on the shelf over here. The Cold War construction of American reconstruction of American science education. This happened starting about 1959 to 1963. All the textbooks were rewritten to now have a whole bunch of the stuff about evolution. We're telling the kid you are an animal. 1963, there was a court case, Madeline Murray O'Hare. Anybody heard of her? Guy came to my house in Pensacola one time. He said, Brother Hoven, I was the landscaper, the gardener for Madeline Murray O'Hare. He said, I like to carve stuff, a wood carver. He said, she was kind of crippled up, so I made her a cane to walk around with. The top of the cane unscrewed, and inside was a little miniature Bible. She never knew that. I never told her. She walked around with a Bible in her hand for years. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cute. So the court case from Madeline Murray O'Hare, it was called the uh, Shemp, uh, Ellery Shemp, uh, what was the name of the case? Abington School District versus Shemp. That's Shemp right there. Uh, the court case decided you cannot require creation be to be taught. And boy, the atheists have twisted that ever since, saying you can't teach creation in schools. Yes, you can, and you should. But in 1963, we started to see a great rise in premarital sex for every age group. Hey, we're telling the kids you're nothing but an animal. What do you expect? Sexual activity among high schoolers, by the time they're in 12th grade, 64% are no longer virgins. High school. 
Sexually transmitted disease went up 385% for 10 to 14 year olds. Wow. Unwed birth rates up 100%. Pregnancies are up 550%. The rest are being aborted. Out of wedlock births as a percentage of all births. It was 33%. I just googled it as of 2012, the last number I could find. It's up to 40% of all births are from people, couple, parents that are not married. 40%. What's that going to do to our society? How many kids are being raised in a home without their natural mom and dad? That has profound effects on a kid for a lifetime. Uh, percent of births to unmarried women, right now, 33% of all the births in the hospital, the mother's not married. It's going worldwide. This is other countries, Chile, Costa Rica, Iceland, there's the United States down there. Some countries it's much worse, up to 70% in Chile, just standard. Percent saying sex between unmarried adults is morally unacceptable. In the United States, only 20, about 30% of the people think it's unacceptable. Who's at the top? What? Everybody else says it's okay. Indonesia. Indonesia at the top. Fatherless homes, kids raised without their natural dad in the home. Make 53% of teen mothers, 63% of teen suicides, 71% of high school dropouts, 85% of youths in prison. How many kids were we with there uh, in, in prison there that were not raised in the natural mom and dad family? Nearly all of them. 90% of homeless runaway children. Now, if, you were, if your parents messed up, if you're a result of, you know, sin, don't complain. Timothy was a half-breed. Timothy, God commanded the Jews to only marry Jews. His mama disobeyed and married a Greek. And Timothy's the result, a half-breed. He never should have been born. But he said, I want, God, I want to serve you anyway. Okay, Timothy, come on in. His mother was a Jew and his father was a Greek, Acts 16. And God used Timothy in a powerful way. Now listen carefully. If your parents messed up, shut your mouth, quit your whining, and go serve God with your life. No excuses. Quit hiding behind that. So I can't serve God. Yeah, you can. Shut up. Go find something to do. There's a war going on. If you're not going to shoot, carry bullets or take care of the wounded or do something. Okay. <laughs> There's been a 725% increase in unmarried couples living together. Now it's up to 1,700% according to 2010 data. The Bible says, Thou shalt not commit adultery, and whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Matthew 5, 28, Jesus said, If you even look on a woman in lust, you have already committed adultery in your heart. God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. He said, That's it. I'm going to wipe him out. It repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. He said, I will destroy man whom I have created. Now, why is this? Well, Satan wants God's job. And since we are made in God's image, he, Satan hates us. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nation? Thou hast said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will be like the Most High. Satan wants God's job. And there's been a long war against God going on. And that's a fabulous book, by the way, by Henry Morris. And so Satan has tricked people into thinking, Oh no, you are evolving into God. This whole evolution theory is part of the idea that man is improving, getting bigger, better, stronger, smarter. Ludicrous. Not true. Divorce rates have gone nuts in this country until about 1980s when people just stopped getting married. Then you don't need a divorce. 144 years is the marriage and divorce in the U.S. The charts. You can Google this. 1963, when we started teaching the kids, you're nothing but an animal. The evolution became the dominating teaching in the schools, and still is today. Just now, they just don't get married. Child abuse, up 2,300%. As of 2014, it was 48.8 cases per 100,000. Child abuse, why? The people, many of them not being raised with their natural mom and dad. Illegal drug use, up 6,000%. Man, when I was a kid, you got in trouble for throwing erasers and, you know, uh, staying out in the hallway talking to somebody. Oh, the Go visit the classrooms today and see what kids get in trouble for. Violent crimes up 995%. I grew up at what used to be 110 Willow Court. Now it's 216 Willow Court. They renumbered it in East Peoria. We, I, we ne I never had a key to my house. We never locked it. No need to lock the house. Why? 
Man, you go to the average high school back then, half the pickup trucks had a loaded rifle in the back seat. And they bring the principal out, you want to see my gun? I'm going hunting after, after school. The number of people killed in school shootings by decade. When I was in high school, I brought a gun for show and tell. Brought a gun for show and tell in high school. Yeah. 142 school shootings since January 2013. What caused the school shooting at Columbine High School? Jeffrey Dahmer, the mass murderer, put in prison, got saved watching my videotapes in prison. Amen. Somebody brought him in there, the chaplain let him watch him, and he gave his heart to the Lord. Amen. How many have seen the testimony of him talking to his dad? I think it was on uh, Focus on the Family. It was our videotapes, uh, creation, that led him to the Lord. So please, thank you for helping our ministry. Let's, we're going to do more. But uh, the two boys at Columbine High School, Klebold and... Uh, Harris, his father, Klebold's father, was a geologist who believed in evolution. Both were followers of Nazi teaching. The shooting took place on Hitler's birthday on purpose to commemorate Hitler. Klebold had a shirt that said, serial killer. They shot Isaiah Scholes just because he was black. Only reason. Hitler hated black people. Newsweek said Eric's t-shirt read, natural selection. Dylan's read, wrath. Why did these kids do this shooting? And don't blame the guns for this. It's not the guns' fault. See, blaming guns for Columbine is like blaming spoons for Rosie O'Donnell being fat. It's not the spoons' fault, Rosie, okay? And it's not the guns' fault. It's, the, it's the, what we're teaching them. Like, duh. Sean, you're going to make it okay? Okay. SAT scores have plummeted since 1963. What has happened? Finally, in 95, they dumbed down the test. They made the test easier so the scores would go back up. Yeah, SAT scores at their lowest in 10 years. Teen suicide rate's gone crazy. Now 12.6 per 100,000. Suicide rate for males still climbing. What's going on here? If I told you if you kiss a frog, it will turn to a prince. You say, no, come on, that's a fairy tale. Yeah, we all know it's a fairy tale. But the textbooks right on these shelves will say, boys and girls, we started off like an amoeba and slowly became a frog, there's grandpa, and very slowly became a prince. Same fairy tale, new magic ingredient. See, if the kiss turns the frog to a prince, we all know that's a fairy tale. But if you give the frog billions of years, oh, now that's modern science. Same fairy tale, new magic ingredient, right here. Billions and billions of years ago. You see the books push this like it is gospel. Millions of years ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. I like to say, uh, teacher, were you there? Well, no. Now, do you really know the earth is billions of years old? Is this actually part of science? Is this something we can observe, study, test, and demonstrate? Or is this just something you believe? They say, everybody believes the earth is billions of years old. No, they don't. 40 to 50 percent of Americans believe God made the world in the last 10,000 years. Sometimes, some survey, 61 percent. Only about Four to ten or fifteen percent believe in pure evolution, no God involved. So why is the minority view being pushed on all the kids? They've done a wonderful job of taking over the school system. Congratulations. We'll see how that works out for you, Judgment Day. But more than four in ten Americans believe in creation, according to the Huffington Puffington Post a couple of years ago. Percentage of Americans who believe God created humans 10,000 years ago has only decreased by two percentage points in 32 years. In spite of intensive propaganda, the percentage of people who believe that humans evolved under God's guidance dropped from 38 in 82 to 31, while the figures rose from 9 to 19 for people who don't believe God had anything to do with evolution at all. Now, if you phrase a question like that, suppose you're taking a survey and it says, do you believe God had anything to do with evolution? Just the way they word the question is going to cause them to get an answer that's going to look like it's on their side. Because most Christians would say, no, I don't think God had anything to do with evolution. And they'd say, aha, see, you believe in evolution. It's a trick, the way they phrase the questions. Be cautious with that stuff. This is deceitful. The question was worded to make the number invalid. It's a question like, do you think God had anything to do with evolution? We'll make atheists say no, since they don't believe in God, and make the believers say no, because they don't believe in evolution. So they're going to get a no both ways, aren't they? Yeah. Survey showed 46% of adults in the U.S. do not think humans had evolved. 
This is startling because evolution has been a settled issue for 150 years. You really think it's a settled issue? That's how they do it. They just make these statements like the R and Ra thing, you know. He would make all these statements. Well, this happened and this happened. Moths and butterflies are related. Everybody knows that and just go right on. Stop. No. Slow down. Let's do this word at a time. And let's decipher some of these big fancy words, you know. 55% of U.S. natural scientists believe in Darwinian evolution 20 years ago. Now that's over half, but that's not all of them. Scientists used to believe all the planets go around the earth, didn't they? They don't. They used to believe big rocks fall faster than little rocks. That was taught for 2,000 years. Until Galileo said, guys, i got a question. If I drop a 10-pound rock and a 5-pound rock, what will happen? They said, oh, the 10-pounder falls faster. Okay. What if I take a 10-pound rock and break it in half and tie it together with a string? Will it fall like a 5-pound rock or a 10-pound rock? That simple question completely stumped him. Well, we, we don't know. He said, well, let's go try it. Mm -hmm. They went up on the Leaning Tower of Pisa, dropped a cannonball and a BB, hit the ground at the same time. They proved something wrong that had been taught for 2,000 years. So the fact that the majority believe something, even if everybody believes something, that doesn't make it true. Always be willing to question this stuff. Back in 1790s, they taught if you're sick, your blood is bad. They couldn't find capillaries. They didn't have good enough microscopes. They didn't know the blood circulated. They thought the heart produced it and it went out and your body used it up. So they thought if you're sick, you have bad blood. Take out some blood, you'll get better. That's how George Washington died. They bled him to get him over the flu. Bled him three times and he died. And they all stood around and said, oh, we did the best we knew to do. Yeah, you killed him. You could tell where to get your blood taken out. All over the country, there were special places to get your blood taken out. The barber, because he had the razor. That's why the barber pole has the red stripe around it. He was the blood letter. You say, hey, doc, I'm not feeling very good. Well, here, put your wrist down here. Take out a half a pint of blood. You feel better now? Oh, yeah, I feel much better. That's creepy. They did. Check it out. Bloodletting. Now, the Bible told them the life of the flesh is in the blood. They could have known that from a long time ago. <laughs> Leviticus, written by, you know, Moses, 1400 B.C. So here we are teaching the kids the earth is billions of years old. I just think it's time to stop and analyze. Slow down. Stop. No, it's not. We're going to show you in the next session all sorts of ways to show the earth cannot possibly be billions of years old. This crazy evolution religion violates the first law of thermodynamics. It violates the second law of thermodynamics. It violates common sense. And if you want to believe that stuff, I don't care what you believe, but you should not force it in our public schools. Go start a private school and teach evolution to anybody that wants to pay and come learn it. Run a monkey up the flagpole and say, come here and learn your grandpa was a monkey. But get it out of our public schools. And you teachers that are teaching public school, get some courage and teach creation in your class. You can't call me. I'll come speak at your class for free. I speak in public schools for free. I want to help share the truth. I won't talk about God or the Bible. I'll just talk about science. The impossibility of evolution happening. If the kids ask questions, I'll answer them. And I'm allowed to talk about God and the Bible, and so are you. Don't be afraid of that. The law has only ever said you cannot require it. But here's what happens. Somebody will threaten a lawsuit if a teacher mentions God. And the school says, we can't afford to defend ourselves. So they win by default. They would have lost, the atheists would have lost the case had it gone to court. But the schools won't fight it. Because of the money. That's how they're winning this battle. Okay, next session. Talk more about the age of the earth. This earth cannot possibly be billions of years old for lots of scientific reasons. Cover that next time. See you later. Bye.